Chris here from Rover Trout Fitters. Today we're going to tie a rusty spinner, a high-vis version. I'm going to start with RX hooks. They're actually one of my favorites. Now these are the dry fly light hooks, barbless, size 14 or 16. I'm using nano silk because again, I like the strength. It lays flat. It's great for small flies. Now what you'll notice here is I'm actually building up a bunch of thread at the very end, right before the bend of the hook. You're going to see why we want to do this. Now I'm going to take mayfly tails, three of them specifically. Honestly, this is the hardest part of the whole fly. I'm going to pin trap them because I need them to stay right on top of the hook. And notice how that extra thread makes them stick up and straight off the hook as opposed to folding down along the curve. Now what we're going to actually do is separate these three fibers apart and split them. I'm just adjusting the length right now. You can do that once you only have one or two thread wraps on there. And I'm going to spread them apart. And actually the easiest thing to do is to put a wrap through the farthest uh, fibbit away from you. And then when you come back up with that same wrap, go underneath the one closest to you and then lock them down with a few thread wraps. And you want to try to get that split, that three-way split with those tails. Trim them to length. Now we're going to do the body with Antron dubbing. Now the great thing about Antron, uh, it gives you a little bit of a buggy body, but it's also waterproof. It, it will absorb water, but the material itself won't soak up that water and it remains buoyant. So it just helps keep this fly up on top. We're gonna do a very thin body, just wrap it up there and now it's time to do the wing. I'm using Parapost. It's important that you get the watershed treated Parapost. Again, this will help the fly to float where you want it to. Uh, I like the amount that comes uh, in the package. They're already in sort of bunches, if you will, but of course you can always add some or take some out. I'm just gonna do some figure eight wraps to lock those down. We're gonna cut it later, so don't worry too much about getting it perfect. Now we're gonna use a bit of high-vis razor foam. This is very thin. It's only like a millimeter thick, uh, orange or pink, whatever kind of color you want for high-vis. I'm tying a small section right behind the wing and just locking that down. Now what we're gonna do is put more Antron on the thread. We're gonna wrap it up the body. And uh, again, nice and thin, very little. This just has to get to the head of the fly. I'm gonna wrap it uh, behind the wing, but underneath the foam once. Then I'm gonna cross over the wing itself, sort of 45 degrees as you see there, and then finish to the head and just clean it up, give it a nice little head there. And that's basically gonna be the fly done. We're gonna pull the foam over, tie it down right behind the eye, and at that point I'm gonna clip off the excess and then I'm gonna cover it up with more thread wraps and when I whip finish it, it'll hold it in place. We're gonna lock that down. Of course, you can use some head cement to keep it there. So now we're gonna trim everything. I'm gonna trim off that high-vis foam. Um, you know, this is just a little bit of help to keep the fly floating and you might be able to see it. Now we're gonna pull the wing up. I wanna cut the wings about the same length as the body. Uh, it's easy when you do them together like that, you get a nice symmetrical thing. And there's our spent spinner. This is great at the end of a mayfly spinner hatch. When the flies die, uh, you know, they just kind of give up and lay on the water. They're an easy meal for trout. And uh, this will work for blue wing olive patterns or pale morning duns. All the materials you need, you can get them at BoverTroutFitters.com. Thanks. Oh, what a dance for the...